Welcome to this week's Artist on Art for June 4th, 2014. I'm your host, Nada Milkovic. I have some lovely, lovely guests in the studio today at KZSC Live for your listening pleasure. I have the wonderful uh, pleasure to be introducing Phil Kramer, the director of the initiative 180-180 and Johnny Hughes. Johnny, Phil, thanks so much for coming into the show today. Great, great to be here. Phil Kramer and Johnny. Thank you. We're going to have to move around with the microphone forward towards you. Yes, there you go. Johnny, let's hear it. Yes. All right, I hear you. Okay, so the show is also going to include later on that we're going to be talking to David Dennis, and we're here today to celebrate the upcoming event First Friday, Santa Cruz, that's happening this Friday, June 6th. If you're not aware of what First Friday Santa Cruz is, it's an open art tour that's been happening here in Santa Cruz for over 10 years. It's a tremendous celebration where the galleries and stores throw open their their doors to showcase local artists. And we're going to be having an exhibition at the Art Loft, a wonderful gallery on downtown Santa Cruz on Pacific Avenue. The Art Loft will be showing photographs by David Dennis, who will be coming on later to talk about the photographs. And the photographs are profiles, or excuse me, portraits of people. And Phil Kramer is here to uh, talk to us about these portraits come from the 180-180 initiative. And we'd like to know what that is. And then Johnny's going to help tell us even more uh, from a personal point of view about 180-180. So Phil, what is 180-180? Um, thanks so much for, uh, for inviting us to be here. This is great. I'm really happy to be here. So 18180 is a countywide initiative to help 180 homeless individuals and families make a 180 degree change in their life by moving from their situation of being unsheltered or homeless into supportive housing, into long-term permanent supportive housing. So it's a an initiative that covers the county, so from Boulder Creek to Watsonville. Um, and we've been doing this for about two years. Um, and really excited to say that we've been kind of racing towards this goal of helping 180 people. And uh, just last week, we actually reached our goal of 180. And, uh, and as of today, we're at 182. So that's really exciting for us to, to, have, uh, to have helped uh, that many, those many individuals into, into, into long-term housing. And, uh, and we're going to keep going. We're not stopping at 180. Hurrah, hurrah, Phil Kramer, that's so wonderful that you've been able to help that, that many individuals, the 180 people that their lives have been completely changed from your work. Now, the 180-180 initiative, this is uh, Santa Cruz County that we're talking about right now, but this is a bigger bigger thing 180 180 yeah you're exactly right so there's a big national campaign going on called the hundred thousand homes campaign and it's been going for four years and the goal of that campaign is evidenced in its own number and that's to help a hundred thousand individuals and families across the country move into long-term housing people that have been experiencing homelessness for a long time make that transition and move into long-term housing so there are over 235 participating communities and you're exactly right we're one of those 235 35 communities here in Santa Cruz County and the 100,000 homes campaign is also really close they're they're hovering right at 99,000 right now <laughs> so in the next couple of weeks uh, we're expecting a really exciting announcement from the 100,000 homes campaign uh, to to announce that they've in fact reached that goal of helping 100,000 people 100,000 chronically homeless people really make that change in their life that you mentioned uh, by moving into into long-term housing Hurrah, hurrah, Phil Kramer. He's here to talk to us about the 180-180 initiative and the 100,000 Homes campaign across the United States. If you'd like to see more information about this, you can go to 180santacruz.org, and you can also see how you might be able to help. Absolutely. So um, 
as much as it's been a countywide initiative, it's been a multi-agency collaborative and a community collaborative. So we work with multiple organizations and agency, agencies throughout the county. We couldn't do this alone. It really has been through the partnerships that we have throughout the county. And that includes community volunteers that are making a big difference in our ability to help people move into housing, provide move-in support, help somebody you know access the housing that they need and the essential items they need once they move in. So there's lots of volunteer opportunities. Thanks for mentioning that. Oh, uh, it's so tremendous, Phil Kramer. Uh, I, I'm dying to know, how did you, how, did you come up with this? Did you see 18180 and said, we need that here? <laughs> or how did this happen? So the 100,000 Homes campaign um, had been going for about two years, and a number of community partners uh, in the service provider, service provider kind of population, people that have been doing this work for a long time, were aware of the 100,000 Homes campaign. And just over the hill in Santa Clara County, they'd launched their own Housing 1000 campaign. So there were lots of points of inspiration for us. Certainly the 100,000 Homes model is one that we're following. And then we were really inspired by some other local nearby communities like Santa Clara County that has this Housing 1000 campaign. And the timing just became right a couple of years ago. We'd kind of been wanting to do this for a while. And the planets aligned uh, a couple of years ago. Um, I personally just came back uh, from the Peace Corps and was really oh. eager to continue that work or that style of work. Right. And, uh, and so I've been the, the project director and director of the, of the campaign initiative for, uh, for the last couple of years. And where did you go for your Peace Corps? I was work? in Panama living in, with an indigenous Indian tribe in the hills of Panama. It was really amazing. <laughs> wow. And so you, you finished that work and you were back here in Santa Cruz and this is, you started this up right away. Yeah. And you know, I, I, I can't take credit for starting it up. It really was, you know, four or five of us on this steering committee kind of looking, right. kind of looking at each other going, we really want to do this. It included people from the Homeless Persons Health Project, Christine Sippel, the director there, Monica Martinez, the former executive director of the Homeless uh, Services Center, and a number of other partners. We kind of coalesced in a room and said, oh, how can we do this? How can we do 100,000 homes? in Santa Cruz. Yes. And so we started doing some back of the envelope calculations. I know you asked a little bit about the number. Where did 180 come from? And we had a number that was really close to what it was like 173. And we're like, we can't be the 173 campaign. So we rounded it up and, and kind of have always been going for something bigger and bolder. And so we became the 180 initiative. And then we're like, what about that 180 degree change? And that includes the change we want to make as a community and the change we want to make as a community of service providers. Oh, it's wonderful. We're going to take a quick little musical interlude with a little Cesaria Evor, and we'll be back with Phil Kramer, the director of the 180-180 Initiative. Artist on Art. I'm here with Phil Kramer, and Johnny Hughes is also in the on-air studio right now here at KZSC Santa Cruz. We're talking about the 180-180 initiative. This is Phil Kramer is the director, and he's been telling us all about um, how it started and before I ask the next question, I just want to let everyone know that if you'd like to speak to Phil Kramer and talk to him about his work, he's going to be available at the Art Loft. Absolutely. This Friday, as a part of the First Friday Santa Cruz Art Tour, and it will be at the Art Loft, Karen Tool's wonderful gallery on Pacific Avenue, which is, I'll get you the address in just, ah, oh, here it is, 1319 Pacific Avenue, and it's on the second floor. It's right above the Thai restaurant. Pacific Thai. Pacific Thai. It's right above there. It's a wonderful gallery space. If y'all haven't seen it yet, this is going to be a great time to see it on Friday, starting around 5 to 9, I believe, is it? Yes, 5.30 to 10 o'clock, actually. It's going to be a little later. And it's two days from now, so make your plans now. And there we will be able to see an exhibition of photographs by David Dennis, who will be on the show a little bit later on today. And that's going to be 23 portraits that are 20 by 20. They're a little bit bigger than the natural size uh, heads. And the reason I say this, folks, they're beautiful. They're so realistic. I actually thought that John, who's Johnny's partner, was sitting behind her. But is, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> it's a wonderful thing. And uh, you'll be able to enjoy those portraits and then talk to Phil about the 180-180 initiative on this Friday, starting at 530 
to 10 o'clock. Again, that's at 1319 Pacific Avenue on the second floor. I want you to know that there will be non-alcohol uh, drinks served there if that is a concern. And it is obviously a family affair because there are kids for portraits and they're, they're all aged people. Yeah. Yeah. Phil knows. He's seen. I've only seen two yet, folks, but um, Phil's not going to tell us anymore because <laughs> David Dennis is going to talk to us, the photographer himself, about it. So 180, 180, you've reached your goal. Congratulations. Hmm. 182 individuals have had their lives completely turned around from being shelterless to having a home. What is next? You've reached your goal so quickly, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. It ha it has been this kind of whirlwind of excitement. I can't decide if it feels like it's been a long two years or a short two years, but it's just really exciting to be at this to be at this point and celebrating this point. So um, we we're, we're not stopping. We're already at 182. So we can every week, every day, you know, we're out there in, uh, helping individuals and families with multiple organizations and agencies um, that are participating in this initiative. And that's why it's an initiative. It isn't just 180 180 doing this work. It is this multi agency collaborative of, of people and organizations that are making this happen. And so we know that we're going to continue and we're really kind of putting the final touches on what that plan looks like. And we're going to announce that in July. So July 17th is actually my way of inviting the community. Um, we're going to make an, have an announcement, have a luncheon at uh, Simpkins Swim Center uh, in, uh, in Mid-County in, in Live Oak, uh, a lunchtime event, July, Thursday, July 17th, where we'll both be celebrating the 180 goal, the 180 plus goal that's of, been reached, that, that's been reached, achieved, and, yes. and and certainly will be, you know, we over continue to be over over the 180 number, um, and then announcing the next phase of the of the campaign and of the of the initiative, um, and so we're. Uh, I don't mean to be coy, but we're we're looking forward to making that announcement oh, uh, in July. I can't wait to hear about it. <laughs> Phil, I just have a couple logistical questions for you. So the agencies that are helping you are not only helping you find the individuals that need shelter, but they're also helping you find the homes for the shelter. Is that correct? Yeah, the partnerships really cover uh, cover the gamut in terms of both identifying individuals that uh, that are chronically homeless. So that's and when I say chronically homeless, that means it's someone who's been unsheltered for a year or more or has had four or more incidences of being unsheltered in a three-year period. So it's both duration and frequency of being unsheltered plus someone has a disabling condition. So some type of medical disabling condition or mental illness or substance abuse issue. So it's those two conditions combined, both duration and frequency of being unsheltered plus a disabling condition. And those are the individuals that are most vulnerable and most vulnerable in terms of most being at risk of dying on the streets. Mm. So for, on average, the last 10 years in Santa Cruz County, 34 people every year, that's an average, 34 people have died unsheltered or homeless in Santa Cruz County. What a terrible so, statistic. Absolutely. And so we can, we, through the campaign's efforts, we administer a survey and we can identif identify someone's risk of mortality using this 40 question survey tool called the vulnerability index. And the idea, the reason it's called an index is that everybody has a score. And we focus our efforts at, and resources towards people with the highest score, meaning those at greatest risk, both because it's the right thing to do, it's the humanitarian thing to do, we don't want people dying on our streets, and it's a better use of the community's resources. Those same individuals are utilizing expensive general relief emergency services like the ER, ambulance rides, jail, etc. So we're trying to also show the community there's a better way of using our resources and one of that is helping people into permanent supportive housing. And so how do you find the housing? Yeah. So Santa Cruz County is a really expensive rental market. I don't need to tell any, all of us in the room. I, we all know that. Um, and with the university and with, you know, it's a beautiful location, obviously. So it's, it's really challenging to find that housing. What, we, what we're doing is collaborating with the housing authority in Santa Cruz County. Uh, and, and we have a partnership with them to help streamline the delivery of Section 8 of vouchers, a housing subsidy that someone might use to help pay for rent. Um, we also are really benefiting so much from the support from community volunteers that are also going out into the community, talking to landlords and property managers, 
at, that have rental units about the campaign, about the initiative, about the benefits of Section 8 housing, which are automatic ele electronic deposits to someone's checking account, and having a case manager there for support should that be needed. Oh, that's wonderful. So the housing's all over the county. It's scattered site throughout the county, and really we're connecting uh, an individual with a housing subsidy or program um, that can help them then both remain access that housing and stabilize in that housing long term. And so how much support do you get from, let's say, the federal government or the state or the... Yes. we. So almost everyone that we've housed has been housed with the support of some type of federal subsidy. And the typical subsidy is uh, it's called the Housing Choice Voucher or a Section 8 voucher that's administered I from see. our housing authority. So that's a there are Section 8 vouchers and subsidies by another name. So some of those are called Shelter Plus Care and match for different programs that are administered. But we get significant support from, from the federal government in terms of a housing subsidy. Unfortunately, the needs exceed the resources that are available, available to us, probably not a, not, not a surprise. So of the 180 people that we've, 182 people that we've helped, uh, that the program and partners have helped into housing over the last two years, that 180 is just a subset of the more than probably 1,000 people are chronically homeless in Santa Cruz County. So. So that's the, the number we need to reach. That's the bigger number, and that's, that's why we know we're not stopping at 180 or 182 or 200, that to continue this, this kind of evidence-based, proven approach, it, boasts, it's, it's cost, it saves lives and it's cost-effective. It's a better use of the community's resources to actually help somebody from being unsheltered, from the streets, into housing, actually saves the community yeah. money. I, I'm sure it does. Phil Kramer, he's the director of the initiative 180-180, and you brought today Johnny Hughes into the, the station today. Johnny, thank you so much for coming up here. Thank you very much. And, yeah, I think the microphone needs to just go a little bit closer to you. There, you want to move a little bit closer to it? There you go. Thank you, Johnny. <laughs> so, Johnny, uh, you've been able to use the 180-180. You've been a part of it. Yes. Would you mind telling us how, how that's gone for you? Oh, it's nothing but wonderful. Um, two months ago or so, we received a voucher and moved in this little um, studio in Felton and could not be happier, honestly. We are tickled. Congratulations. And uh, how did you hear about the 180? 180? I heard about it through um, Paul at HPHV, which is the homeless shelter. Um, I had gone there for, for medication, and Paul told, told me about this. And automatically, um, we qualified because I, last August, had a heart attack. Oh. So that's what started me able to be, to qualify. And so the, you have a, a home now? Yes. A, a, and, and what else have you been able, have there been other services that have helped you, like, move in or...? Well, no, just just the 180, 180. Um, what what I do is we have um, Johnny Hats, and Johnny Hats supports Let's Have Soup. Let's Have Soup feeds the homeless um, every holiday and every other Saturday in Felton or in Boulder Creek. So, um, and and we've been doing that for about going on four years, I guess. And literally the homeless feeding the homeless, but um, couldn't be more blessed by it. I, I always say I, I get way more when I volunteer than what I'm supposed to be giving, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It is. Very true. Um, and so, so, Johnny, tell us what's been the biggest change between having been shelterless and, and having this new place? Oh. Many things, um, electricity, um, <laughs> just the, you know, walls and flowers and just everything that you, when you're homeless, you honestly, you have nothing. Um, some, 
some might think that um, it's all fun because you're at the park all day having a good time, da da da. Well, you know, that's just for a moment. Then you go home to your camp that could be there or could not be there, depending. Um, and you have nothing. And so it's very, it's very sad. And it's, it's heartbreaking. And once something happens to you that you get to the position of being homeless, standing up and getting out of that is very difficult. You know, it's just really, really hard to um, get out of it. Johnny, Johnny Hughes here at KZSC telling us about how her life has um, was before she got involved with the 180-180 initiative, but she thankfully is not shelterless and has a place now. We're going to take a quick break and listen to a little more Cesaria Evora, and we'll be back with Johnny Hughes and Phil Kramer. This is Artist on Art. I am your host, Nada Milkovich. I have the wonderful pleasure to be speaking with Johnny Hughes. She is a uh, a participant in the 180-180 initiative that we've been talking with. Phil Kramer was on earlier in the show. He is the executive director. And we'll also be talking to Dennis, David Dennis, excuse me, David Dennis, the photographer. And there's an upcoming exhibition of the show. Uh, what's the show called? Uh, it's called Faces of Santa Cruz County. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> That's Faces of Santa Cruz County, and that will be at the Art Loft which is at 1319 Pacific Avenue on the second floor. The Art Loft Gallery is a part of this week's Santa, Santa Cruz First Friday First Friday Santa Cruz Art Tour is what that is. And the exhibition gallery hours start at 5.30 and they run until 10 o'clock. And there you'll be able to see the portraits photography by David Dennis. But before we talk to David Dennis, I'd like to speak with Joan, Joan, Johnny Hughes just a little bit more. Johnny, um, you wanted to say something about the homeless community here in Santa Cruz? Um, mostly Boulder Creek and Felton, for what I know. Um, it's, um, it's a, There's a, a, a group of homeless people that actually... Um, they don't live together, but they're um, such that they take care of each other. If someone needs something, then they everyone pulls together and tries to help everyone. And that's what um, that's what happened to me when I became homeless. Is um, luckily I was introduced to this group of people, and um, because I had been married all my life, I didn't know how to live in what I call the wilderness. <laughs> you know, I didn't know how to do it. And so these people actually stopped eating their food and fed me, got out of their beds so I could sleep. They took care of me. Oh. And um, I am grateful to each and every one of them, and I love them all. And many of these folk are a part of the Johnny Hats collective would you call it johnny hats what is it how did i come with johnny hats no 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 you these people are a part of johnny hats oh that? absolutely yeah mm -hmm. yes and johnny hats is a organization that you volunteer with and you help feed johnny hats um is um my way of supporting let's have soup which feeds the homeless I and see. the hungry so johnny hats is actually your business Yes. And you're going to be selling your business, which is making art, uh -huh. right? Yes. <laughs> you make art hats. <laughs> yeah. fact, folks, yes. she's wearing a lovely hat right now. That, is that yeah. yours? Yes. Is <laughs> this is one of my favorites. Um, <laughs> as an um, art show, we, I will be selling crystal jewelry and the custom-made hats. That, that you've made. Yes. And then a portion of that will not only go to 180, 180 of the sales, the right. proceeds, mm -hmm. but also some of it will go back to... To Let's Have Soup. Let's Have Soup. Which, which is yours. Which is mine, too. Well, ours. Yes. It's everybody's. It's yeah. everybody's, but you're kind of a leader in it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Hughes, thank you so much for sharing with us uh, uh, some tough times for you, but I'm so glad they're behind you. Yes. Thanks to the 180-180 initiative. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, that was able to help you go from being shelterless to have a home. Yes, um, thank you. 
Thank you. <laughs> Johnny came up here uh, just to talk to us, and I'm oh so grateful. And now we're going to talk to David Dennis, who's been taking pictures. I have. You're a photographer. That's right. And you're going to be showing your portraits, 23 of them? 23 portraits, uh, 20 by 24 size. We, uh, it's partly sponsored by Bay Photo. They gave us a terrific deal on the, on the pictures, oh. amazing organization. Uh, and uh, we'll have them on display at the Art Loft on Pacific Avenue on Friday night. And so, David Dennis, you almost all of your photographs are portraits. Yeah, they're all portraits, um, and we're sort of blurring the lines between who's who. So I've shot people who are homeless, you know, living in the fields of Lighthouse Field, folks like Johnny who were uh, 180, 180 clients who've been housed with help from the program, um, sort of local celebrities, uh, Kirby Scudder, who's, you know, a big, been instrumental in the art community in Santa Cruz. Well, he uh, helped start the First Friday exactly. Art Tour. Yeah, and, that's and the happening tannery, this Friday. And, absolutely. Uh, Neil Coonerty, who owns the bookshop Santa Cruz as a county supervisor. But when you first walk in, you're not going to know who's who, and you've got to uh, flip a little card to determine you know who was homeless who is homeless who's never been homeless who was a runaway um, because you, there's so much diversity you really can't tell just by looking at people you really can't judge a book by its cover and that's that's what's the inspiration behind choosing these people to take portraits of yeah that's right I mean, I wanted to do something. I see, you know, the situation in Santa Cruz with the, with people who are homeless, and um, I like to support with my photography um, education, ocean conservation, and services for the homeless. Uh, and so, one eighty one eighty is doing such amazing work. They were a natural choice for me to to support with this project. Oh, it's wonderful, David Dennis. How long have you been a photographer? I've been shooting for about twenty years. I travel around the world a lot, do a lot of street portraits, um, and I just I love you know every face is different, every second of every face is different. Uh, and I love being able to showcase that in my in my photography. I have a tech job over the hill during the day. I work for Microsoft uh, with the Outlook.com product. And Microsoft matches $17 an hour for every hour I volunteer to a nonprofit. Uh, and then they match 100% of what I donate. So just my involvement in this project means that Microsoft will be giving about $2,000 to 180 180 So that's another reason I do it. Wow. Uh, and people can look at your portraits and other photography by going to David Dennis Photos. Dot com. That's right. And you can also go to the Art Loft. Uh, there's a Facebook page, uh, Art Loft of Santa Cruz. There's also the 180 180 Santa Cruz Facebook page, 180 forward slash 180 Santa Cruz, if you're looking for um, any of this online. And so, David, you've been focusing mostly on portraits? Yeah, I do. My last show was called Board Makers of Santa Cruz at Cafe Aveda on the west side. I shot almost everybody that makes surfboards in some way uh, across the whole county uh, and did a, a huge um, opening and closing show for First Friday a few months ago to raise money for Surfrider Santa Cruz. Which is a wonderful nonprofit th that helps uh, kids ride Actually, Surfrider does uh, ocean cleanup. Ocean cleanup. Um, yeah, I'm they're thinking focused of... on ocean conservation. Yeah, Doesn't... there's the and, and that's another program that that's actually one of the ones I want to reach out to for one of my next projects. So. <laughs> the Surfrider. Uh, Surfrider does uh, ocean conservation ocean... around the world. Oh, I'm sorry, folks. Yeah. But yeah, we have we have some really great organizations that are helping. Yeah. They see the need and they're they're going for it, such as the 180 180 right. initiative. That's uh, right. That Phil Kramer. How did you guys get to? connected um uh, karen tool who you know uh owns the art loft downtown uh, my wife and i just happened to pop in to look at some of her art one day and we got to talking and we sat down for coffee and she told me about 180 180 i'd never heard of it uh, and i said wow that sounds amazing let's do a project together and it's just gone you know big time from there it's going to be quite a, quite an event i think oh yeah and again to be uh there this friday starting at five thirty, you need to go to the art loft santa cruz that's at 1319 pacific avenue on the second floor and again you can go to the facebook page uh art loft santa cruz you can see more about 180 180 uh also on facebook and the 180 santacruz.org is the website 
uh, that will give you more information about the 180-180 program. Uh, there's going to be music and food and drinks, and it's a free show that, again, will feature these very large portraits, uh, right. bigger than life. People. Yeah, we'll have free food. We'll have uh, Chris Drury, who is a savant guitar player. Uh, he'll be playing a couple of sets for the show, and so free music, free food. Hopefully we'll get some volunteers and maybe raise some money for 180-180. Uh, I'll be selling the pictures as well. Uh, $200 a portrait, and all that money will go to 180-180. And as I mentioned earlier, Microsoft will match all of that. So pick up a portrait, and it'll be a $400 effective donation to 180-180, which I think will be great. Oh, we can't talk about real numbers there. Uh, but people, yeah. Okay. It's, a, it's a free event, folks, so just know that. That's uh, <laughs> we're going to take a quick little break and uh, have a little Cesare Avora. We'll be back with David Dennis. Ah, this is Artist on Art. I'm here with Dennis David. Dang it, Everybody da does it all David the time. Dennis. <laughs> David Dennis, and you can go to DavidDennisPhotos.com to see his wonderful, larger-than-life photography portraits of people. Uh, well, the ones that we're talking about right now actually are portraits that are larger in life because they um, will be shown at the Art Loft in Santa Cruz at 1319 Pacific Avenue this Friday as a part of the First Friday Art Tour. And isn't it appropriate that you'll have Kirby Scudder as one of those portraits? Yep, he's an icon. So, David Dennis, how did you start photography? You know, I, I started shooting probably 20 years ago, maybe a little bit longer. Um, I think the first time I really knew that it was something I wanted to do more um, thoroughly was I took a trip to Cuba. Um, I think it's still sort of illegal to go to Cuba. We sort of snuck in through Mexico City uh, in the early 90s, 1991. And I brought a, a DSLR, or it wasn't D at the time, it was an SLR. Um, and I shot some really neat portraits of people in Cuba. Um, but somehow I thought that black and white would be great for Cuba. And so um, I kicked myself that I didn't bring color because Cuba is such a colorful and vibrant country. Um, and then with the, you know, how digital's taken off, it's it meant that I can go out and shoot thousands and thousands of pictures of people, you know, everywhere I go and have some just amazing pictures come out of it without all the expense of film. The first real, um, you know, uh, color portrait that I took in the developing world that I really love, it's hanging in my bedroom, is of a, of a baby who's Mayan. And I snapped a picture of, of the baby on the back of the mother and with the colorful Guatemalan fabric. And the mother chewed me out, yelled at me. There was a rumor going around Guatemala at the time that Americans were stealing organs and eyes from children. So I made a huge mistake uh, shooting a, a, a child without permission, and I never made that mistake again. So now I try to interact with people around the world, take their pictures, mail them the pictures, and it's allowed me to connect with people all over the place. It's really cool. So this portrait of the baby is a, a lesson that you remind yourself of. Yep. I was going to ask you about that because uh, taking pictures of people, um, sometimes they can feel like they're being, that you're taking a part of them somehow. The, the, there has, do you always get permission always, is what I'm trying yeah, to ask. Always. And, and ha how's the reaction to your request been? You know, on my website, daviddennisphotos.com, I actually wrote a, a post about how to shoot people uh, even if you don't speak the language and get their permission and I use a bunch of different techniques sometimes what I'll do is I'll just shoot like a pet like I can remember I was in Nicaragua a couple years ago and um, I wanted to shoot a family but they had these cool dogs running around so I shot the dogs and then I turned the camera around and I showed them the dogs on the back of the camera and then I pointed the camera at them and said kind of you know I speak Spanish so I asked them if I could then shoot them and they said oh okay this looks cool so then I shot the whole family for a half an hour you get so, through the with the pets right Right. Ah. But you also have to know the culture, right? <laughs> like I've traveled a lot in, um, in Muslim countries, so Morocco and Egypt, for example. Um, you, you can't shoot a woman without permission. Um, really shouldn't shoot anybody without permission, but you can get in some serious trouble if you shoot a woman um, without permission from a, you know, a father or husband, regardless of what you think about that. That's the reality. So you have to be careful. You have to know the culture, um, and uh, you can get some amazing shots if you do. 
I, I'm I'm wondering. You must have made many connections because you you said that you send people your portraits yeah, of them right. if they if they're interested. How many have you? Oh, I have thousands. You know, I always try to follow up. And anybody that goes and, and you know says they're going to give pictures to someone, please do that because it'll make it easier for the next photographer the next time around. Right. But now with digital, I'm amazed, and you know all the amazing online services that we have. Uh, at the the number of people who are connected, um, I was in Cambodia about a year and a half ago, and shot a Buddhist monk, and he was really excited to see the picture on the back of the camera, and then gave me his Skype account and his Facebook address, and now we're <laughs> close friends on Facebook, and I was able to share him the photos directly on Facebook. So even Buddhist monks in Cambodia are on social networks these days. So it's mm. amazing how you can connect with people. Wow. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> And so when you do your photographs, I'm imagining you don't have lights or anything. Is it just a camera? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, um, I don't like all the equipment. Um, it, it, you know, if I'm trying to take a portrait in the street and I have 10 seconds to do it, I can't set up. So I use a flash usually as a to, to fill you know fill the face and and get a little glimmer in the eye, uh, and I have a couple of um, modifiers that I put on the flash to really um, soften it and, and project it a little bit more. But I just have a, a DSLR and a flash, and that's it usually. Now may I ask you about the two photographs that I'm looking at that mm -hmm. are the bigger than life portraits? One is of John, Johnny's partner, husband, right. husband, and then one is of a, a beautiful little girl. Uh, holding a plate of food eritrean food eritrean food eritrean i, food, I yeah. love eritrean this, food this family owns a um a company called red sea and they they have uh, the farmers market in scotts valley they serve and they could do festivals and i met them at the rejuvenation festival a couple of weeks ago wound up going to their house shooting the whole family oh. she's adorable eritrean three years old the funniest thing spitfire and so, were there lights used in, in these photographs? Uh, no, the, the one of the little girl, um, which I guess if you watch the video podcast after, you'll be able to see that or come down to the art loft and see it. Uh, that was shot outside with natural light and a little bit of flash to, to give a little glimmer in the eye, like I said earlier. But neither of these pictures, and none of the pictures really, were shot with anything other than a flash and a camera. Wow. You you have mastered the technique, David I'm, Dennis. Honestly, you. they're they're incredible. They look like they're studio... Studio portraits. Photoshop helps a tiny bit, but for the most part, it's the camera and the flash. <laughs> oh, don't say that. <laughs> it's all you, Just a baby. tiny bit of, just a little color <laughs> adjustment here and there. But generally, you know, at this size, you can't do much editing in Photoshop because you'll be able to see every edit. In fact, I edited a couple and we had to reprint them because Photoshop just kind of destructed the photo a little bit. Ah, and again, you, uh, we want to thank Bay Photo. Yeah, Bay Photo gave us a, a tremendous discount, um, and I don't, they don't do that for everybody. Uh, um, but to support the yeah. 180 180 initiative that's right. it's such an amazing program i mean bay photo is one of the best printers in the country probably the world and they're right here in santa cruz yeah it's amazing uh, it's a really amazing set of prints so i do all my my show prints there and hopefully we'll have a great partnership going forward after this event and david dennis you said that when you started doing photography it, it wasn't really as an activist how no, did that how did that change you know because you feel like an activist photographer you talk about educating people and and showing people yeah i think my dream has always been to be some you know traveling photojournalist uh it's just really difficult to make a living as a photographer which is why i have my my day job at microsoft so i figure i'll put that skill into trying to help make a living for other people and organizations nonprofits that i care about wow that 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 that's wonderful thank you david dennis He's our local photographer. That's right. I live That's on the right. west side with my wife and kids. And also Phil Kramer. You're a local too, right? Yeah. I'm in uh, Aptos, Mid County. And, and Johnny, we know you're in Felton. Absolutely. That's, That's, right. That's right. So we're all Santa Cruz Countyites here talking about and celebrating the 180-180 initiative. They have uh, met there. Exceeded. They exceeded. Amazing. Met and and ex early. And early. And so it's going to be really interesting. July 17th. Is that right, Phil? Yeah, that's right. So July 17th, we'll uh, both be celebrating the, the 180 plus goal um, and uh, announcing the next phase of the uh, of the initiative. So we're really excited about that. And I just want to say I'm really grateful for, uh, for David and uh, for all the work and initiative and heart and soul that he's put into this to getting us this far. Uh, you know, it's its own little mini project. So somehow he finds the time with his day job to do this so we're really grateful um, and really looking forward to Friday and, and for Johnny for being there with her hats too yeah, it's gonna be and great. jewelry 
<laughs> jewelry as well, yeah. Jewelry, the the um, jewels of me from crystal, crystal mm -hmm. jewelry. Crystal jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. So uh, that'll be at Simpkins Park. Simpkins Home Center, July seventeenth. That's Thursday, July seventeenth. It'll be a luncheon, so noon to one thirty, and there'll be more information in the in the subsequent weeks and months as we get close to July seventeenth. And a quick way for people to find out about that, they would be able to go to Facebook page and just like it. Absolutely, like it, and, and go to our website, one eighty santacruz dot org. That's right. And then uh, for people who don't want to wait till June or July, excuse me, July, they'll be able to talk to you on Friday. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. So I'll be downtown as part of the First Friday Art Tour uh, with, uh, with David and Johnny and a number of other folks and all the great portraiture uh, at, the, uh, at the Art Loft, which uh, I'll do this for you. Uh, 1319 Pacific Avenue, um, right above Pacific Tie. So I'll be there Friday uh, from 530 to 10 and, uh, and would love to, uh, to chat with, uh, with, uh, with anybody from the community. And David Dennis will be there also, as well as Johnny Hughes. It's going to be a wonderful uh, exhibition. These two photographs are so beautiful. Thank you. Uh, I can hardly imagine uh, uh, the art loft filled with these portraits. I and, mean, and the people who are in the portraits, most of them will be there as well. Some oh, of the folks who are homeless great. today are going to come, and terrific people. I mean, I've really met some amazing people with this project. I mean, Johnny, mm -hmm. I didn't. I don't know if I told you this, but uh, you know, they were the first couple that I shot. And I was in tears driving home because she's such an inspiration, selling, making hats, selling hats, and then feeding other people who are homeless. And I, I was just blown away. Yes, Johnny Hughes. We are. I am so grateful and honored that you were able to come on today. It's oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. It was kind of a last moment. I knew that uh, <laughs> David Dennis was coming up and Phil Kramer. We had talked about that. Uh, actually, I think. Karen got us together a month ago, That's at least. Right. Um, but Johnny was kind of a last hurrah surprise, and <laughs> I'm so glad that you're able to come. Thank you. Um, if you missed any part of the show tonight, today, guess what? You can go to Artist on Art. Dot com and you'll be able to see a video and have the podcast of it. Uh, I want to thank Vanya Benavides of VAB Media for live tweeting and Facebooking today during the show. And, of course, I want to thank Phil Kramer, uh, director of the 180-180 Initiative, Johnny Hughes of Johnny's Hats and Soup. Let's Have Soup. Let's Have Soup and David Dennis uh, of David Dennis Photos. And uh, I hope to have you all on real soon. Uh, see what else, what other art making you're you're doing. Great, thank you. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Th stay tuned for Highway 61. It's been a great pleasure, and, and thanks for listening. Hope you have a great day. Thank you.